It's a good, good church. church. We're excited about all that God is doing. If you're, if you're here for the first time today, uh, we extend a very special welcome and greeting to you. K.L., would you put your hands together and welcome our first-time guest? <laughs> Hallelujah. We're so glad you're here. I see a lot of second time, third time, and I see some in the room that it's about a 30,008 time. <laughs> Praise the Lord for you. I love, our, I love our dear saints that lay a foundation of faith. It's amazing to me. This spirit-filled church, you know, has, has um, I'm not going to use the term, been watered down in some circles, but um, I believe it has. But um, I know we have some saints in the room that are holding on to, uh, to Pentecost and holding on to the Acts experience. And uh, that's who we are. We are a spirit-filled evangelical church that prioritizes the presence of God before programs and, uh, uh, and anything of that nature. We, we prioritize his presence. Our mission is very simple here. It is to connect all people to the presence of God so that you and I can live and have hope and joy and freedom. Um, I pray that you have felt the presence of God here today. I pray that those that were in need of it, maybe today you, you, you grabbed a hold of some hope. Um, maybe there's some into here today, you, you grabbed some joy in your life. But I pray that there's been some that's been set free in this place today that you won't go back to um, the same struggle, the same bondage. Um, but today you found freedom. And uh, if, that's, if you did, I want you to know, I'm celebrating with you. Because I've, I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times. You know, you can be saved and not be free. As we go into 2025, that part of our, of our, of our mission, our vision, will become... Um, really a very um, pointed, um, let's say, target uh, or initiative um, for the next phase of kingdom life and where we're headed. Um, we're stepping into a, an extreme time of discipleship. Um, we'll talk more about that later, but I, I want to tell you that I believe with, with all of my heart, as well as my staff, that the Lord has put his finger on the moment of which we now stand. And, and today, September 22nd, is not just another day that we are launching uh, small group ministries. No, there's something different about this day, this moment in time. Many of you have not been a part of this ministry for that long. Some of you have, and some of you know exactly when I say this, there has been real attacks on this ministry before it was Kingdom Life, when it was Great Bridge Church of God. There was real attacks on this ministry by way of home groups, small groups. Very destructive things took place in years past. Separation and division and discord. And um, there has been a real attack on this ministry from going beyond the experience of worship into a place of being a fully devoted follower and disciple of Jesus. The, the enemy does not, does not care if you and I just come have a good time together. But what he does care about is when you actually become a follower of Jesus. Not only gaining knowledge and wisdom, which is wonderful. I'm so thankful for all of your degrees. <laughs> and certificates. And how many times, I celebrate with you, how many times you have read the one-year Bible. I celebrate with all of those things. But you can have wonderful times in, in gaining knowledge and wisdom, whether it's Sunday school experiences of past or whatever it may be. You can gain all of that. But if there is no application of that which you have learned, what good is learning it at all? But the Lord doesn't call you so that you will remain you. Oh, come on. The Lord calls you so that you will become the new you. You cannot stay in the same place that he found you. I know you said you found the Lord, but no. You didn't find him. The Lord was never lost. The Lord found you, baby. He found you. 
but don't stay where he found you. When the Lord finds you, he calls you. And it's the beginning of a glorious journey of which he called you on. I love the knowledge. I love the education. I love the learning. I love all of those other kinds of things. But I can't just learn it to put it as a plaque on the wall. You come in my office, you'll see them on the wall. That's wonderful. But if I had just walked across that stage and put it on the wall but never put it to work, I would not have stepped into the destiny of which I was called. You are called. Can I tell someone today that you are called for such a time as this, right here, right now. And you are not called to remain the same that you were. You are not called to stay where you were found. But you are called to step. You're called to step. Step in tune with him. Because the Lord Jesus is moving. The Holy Spirit moves. You go all the way back to the beginning. When you found the Holy Spirit, what was he doing? Moving. Over the face. Oh, come on. He's still moving. So if he's moving and I'm not. I'm trying to be careful. If he's moving and I'm not. Then I've let go of his hand. Somewhere along the way. Now here's the goodness of God. Is that if I let go of his hand and I remain where he found me and or I quit along the way. If I just reach my hand back up to him, he's all, I'll find that he's already been reaching down to me. And he'll pick me up. As the old song said, and he'll turn me around and set my feet. Come on, somebody. On solid ground. That's the Lord. That's the Lord. So there's been an attack. And I'm going to tell you why the Lord does. I mean, the enemy doesn't mind just you and I having a good time. You, go, you know, there's a lot of churches. You can go and have a great time. I'm not even saying a good time. You have a great time. The music's great. They have a drummer. Uh, <laughs> You know what I'm saying. But what is missing in so many churches today is the presence. Is the presence of God. But we can't just stop at worship. When we arrived in 2020, and here's the thing I'll say. As much as the enemy has combated discipleship and small groups and things in this ministry, there's always been a mandate and calling of worship on the house. And so when I came in, I didn't come in with a, as a pastor, I didn't come in with just all of a sudden, and my staff will tell you, I didn't come in just spitting a vision and casting vision and all that. You know why? Because I, I, didn't, I didn't have one. I didn't know why I didn't have one. You know, everybody in the world was saying 2020, a year of clear vision. 2020, we're going to see with clarity. I couldn't see anything. And that was before COVID showed up. Then I realized there was a lot of people falsifying. Oh, y'all ain't going to help nobody. They got some vision all right. They got some clarity all right. And I'm going to tell you what, what I learned through that process. For that year, year and a half, I learned that we have a real devil that is fighting the church. And he has been operating to this point, it seems, in the shadows. And we... As the church begin to learn what it was, we begin to learn and to live with it. Oh, come on. Y'all not going to help me this morning. We begin to cope with that which was in the darkness. We begin to cope. And this is in your notes if you want to fill in a blank. We begin to cohabitate with it. The church got found sleeping adulterously. Come on. With the enemy. But what we, but what, okay, we got caught. But guess what? We got up. We got up. And in 2023 here in this ministry, we casted vision. We casted vision. 
connect all people, he said, to, the, to me. Do that. And they'll have hope and joy. And they'll have freedom. That's what they have. He said, okay, great. Establish vision. Worship, worship became, oh, you know what we got here. <laughs> worship is incredible here at Kingdom Life. Amazing. I mean, I can't even tell you how, man, how excited I am every Sunday to come and be in this type of environment. Because I've been in a lot of churches, baby, and I'm going to tell you, I didn't like a lot of them I was in. But I like this one. I like this environment. You worship. And we have an incredible team. You heard me what I said. They had four backups. I mean, that's an incredible team, right? My Lord. Just goes to show you, maybe we need a fifth one. Okay. I'm going to ride this thing. I'm going to ride it. I'm going to ride it till the drummer comes back, baby. Come on. <laughs> Dr. Oliver Jones plays the drums. Maybe it's time to knock the dust off them things. Huh? Brother sitting right beside him, bass player from Jamaica. Y'all know how Jamaicans like their music. You ain't seen nothing. You ain't seen nothing. I'm going somewhere. But worship is a, is, a, is a core value. In fact, it's, uh, it's placed as the fourth in our core value as, of, of connect, grow, serve, worship. And I believe it's placed as the fourth because it is the foundation for everything that we do. Worship is a priority. And uh, the next two of connect and grow. A big part of those um, being fruitful is KL groups. It's discipleship. It's so limiting. Maybe you know, well, you probably do because you experience it. It's so limiting to try to do discipleship on a Sunday morning in a short window of time. It's almost impossible. We can disciple certain ways, certainly, and from the platform we can do those things, but real discipleship takes place uh, typically in a more reduced setting, um, more consistent time, um, and in and, and a path, and, uh, and also personal devotion, you know. It mean, it meaning we have to get to the place where it's not just, it's not just um, good for somebody else to do it in our, in our vicinity, but now we start doing it for ourselves. It's, it's different. It's different. Sooner or later, uh, you got you to start feeding yourself, right? Oh, come on. You can't remain a baby. Yeah, yeah. People get tired of feeding you. <laughs> you know? Sooner or later, you got to pick up the, 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 the steak knife um, and, the, and the fork, and you slice that ribeye. Keep the fat on it, baby. Slice and eat it. <laughs> Sooner or later, you got to digest some for yourself. So, so we have to have a devotional time. Uh, and that is, do you know what devotional time is? It's devoted time to the Lord. It's not convenient time to the Lord. It's devoted time. So, again, it doesn't require long, lengthy periods. I just want to encourage somebody today. I just spoke with someone this week, and, and, I was, um, and they were telling me about their devotion time. And so, yeah, yeah, they listen to the Word, and they pray on the way to work, and that kind of thing. That's wonderful. But they also have another time um, in, in the evening where they have their, their Bible, and they have some time with the Lord. They have a daily devotion. I want to encourage you, get in the Word. Um, you'll be glad you did. But there's something about coming into a place with others um, that are like us, that are on a journey. We haven't arrived, and, uh, and all we want to do is follow Jesus, and, and we want to become more like Him. So we get into a small, a small, smaller gathering. Um, whether it's, uh, you know, around a book of the Bible or whether or not it's a, 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 around a, a, a secular book, maybe on, on, on Christian leadership or whatever it may be, or whether it's couples or whether it's women, whether it's men, whatever it is, we, we, we pray and we find our place for the season. And, and then we commit, okay, at, uh, to step in and, 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 be, and be a disciple um, and then also help others along that journey. We're called to encourage one another. You know that, right? There's nothing in this right here that tells us that we are to discourage one another. You, anybody? You might want to show me. Encourage one another in the ways of the Lord. 
Do you know there's nothing in this about tearing down people of God? It's about building them up. This book is about edifying one another. When's the last time the person you're hanging with or the person you out encouraged and edified you? When's the last time you encouraged and edified someone else? This is our calling. It's to build up, to equip, right, one another. The Bible tells us that iron sharpens iron. Look at some of y'all been reading your Bible. Look, I knew I was in the right place. Iron sharpens iron. So, with all that said, I say this. The Lord's finger is on this moment. And we are stepping through, I believe, a huge barrier that has existed for decades against this church. And the enemy hates it. And he'll use anything and anyone to stop it. But I refuse as the pastor at the helm to let the enemy rob this church of the glory of what it means to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. The Lord has his finger on this moment and I want to encourage you like I have never encouraged any other church people in my entire life. Don't miss the moment when we walk out those doors today. That promenade is going to be full, full of small groups and information and teachers and pastors and leaders. Don't run out the side gate. Go through the promenade. Talk to some people. I want to see you as a disciple because it is there and only there that you truly will ever know what it means to have abundant life in Jesus. Because he doesn't call you and leave you. He calls you to get on the journey. As I was coming through the door, I forget who it was. They said, the train is leaving the depot. I said, here's my ticket. I'm on board. Will you get on board? Will you get on board with discipleship? Will you pray for it? Will you protect it? Because it is God's mandate in God's time. And in God's word that we, come on. Become disciples of Jesus Christ. And the glory of the church is that we get to do it together. Ooh. We get to do it together. So we've got plenty. And Pastor Isaac, in our closing, will tell you about, oh, there they are. Look at, look at, look at Mr. Dixon. Tanya's doing good instruction back there. Yeah. So Pastor Isaac's going to tell you more about him. Come on up and get ready. Why are you, you, why are you jumping? Look at all those beautiful faces. Look at all those leaders. Look at all our leaders. Come on, let's give it up for all our leaders for KL Groups. Shia, what's your hair doing right there? It reminds me of my mama. Back in the day, I got one of them beehives. You remember the beehives? It's good to have the only mic in the room. Come on. So I want to encourage you. Join a group. Um, you'll be glad you did again. Um, there's so much life found in small groups. The system that we're rolling out, and you hear, you've heard us talk about systems all year. When we begin to cast, uh, when we begin to, um, we had Vision Sunday in the beginning of, of the year, and I began to talk about our core values, and we preached a whole series. Uh, some of our teenagers last night saw the apple tree out in the garage, and they said, what, what, what is that for? I said, oh, let me tell you about the series called core and we begin to cast vision and um, we begin to roll out um, the next um, the next stage for 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 God in kingdom life and uh, we talked about systems small groups the KL groups was one of those systems and um, uh, Pastor Sidney and the team and many group leaders have done a great job uh, over the years and but we knew we needed to bring some freshness to to the season we're now in and and so we prayed and and uh, um, systems boot camp in June and then we rolled out all kinds of different things all year long we've been talking about groups and um, we decided 
to go with a year-round uh, model of discipleship year round because we don't believe that um, discipleship should just only be for certain seasons of the year, but we need to be year round. Um, but also, we understand that, well, I'll just say, we, we check out real easy <laughs> uh, when something, even if it's a good thing, um, goes on too long. So, what we did is we provided two, two models of, of A and B, uh, each running uh, eight weeks. And uh, what you're going to see today is the first of the two. The A group launches today. We've got about 10 or 11 groups that are launching. Just come out with me. Be with me because I feel like I'm doing your job up here. Come on. Um, <laughs> so we've got, we've got about 10, 11 groups, and I'm super, super excited. And what you're going to see is many opportunities on many different days. There's an insert in your program, but also the information in the promenade. Um, I want to encourage you. Don't just run out the side door. Don't, don't, don't just run by. Um, it, it's a wonderful, at least get the information so you can pray, um, pray over being a part of it. So the eight groups will run for eight weeks. Um, I'm doing one. Um, you're doing, you and Kelly, Pastor Kelly are doing one. What are you yeah, doing? Yeah, that's right. We're actually doing a couples group. A couples group. Yep. We've and got that's going to be at your home, for, right? Uh, that's actually going to be here. Yeah, it's going to okay. be child care. So really the vision going forward when it came to groups is we wanted to make sure that we are hitting every area of what you guys need for the discipleship process and your development. So we had everything from uh, Bible studies to there's going to be things on, on finances coming soon. Eventually I'm going to be teaching one on how to study your Bible because you're not just supposed to just read it. You got to learn how to study it. We got to teach you this. But as far as what's going on now, as you can see the groups that are coming up right there, there's two for women. There are two for men. Uh, men, I encourage you get connected. We want to make sure that we are leading well as men, and we want to do that with you guys, uh, as well as couples. My wife and I are going to be doing one, watch this, marriage on the rock. We're not looking for the marriage that's on the rocks. Get it? That make y'all get what's there? Okay. So, uh, yeah. So, I don't want y'all to be like, oh, honey, we going. We're so broken right now. That's not what, yeah. But nonetheless... <laughs> You see what I'm about to say. But it's marriage on the rock. It's understanding what God's word says about what the marriage life is supposed to look like. As well as uh, Dear John, if you want to talk a little bit about yeah, that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Dear John is not writing a letter to, uh, to someone you're leaving. Um, <laughs> this summer we did Hey Jude. Um, and we had a great time in Jude, didn't we? We had a lot of folks at it. But every Wednesday night at 7 o'clock right here in the uh, main sanctuary, we will have, uh, I'm going to be teaching the gospel of John, the book of John. And uh, we called it Dear John, uh, just to, to have a play on words. But what we do with that group is we have um, in here a podcast recording time of teaching um, for, for a section of our time. But then we have tables set up in the promenade and we go out and we break up in smaller smaller groups and we have refreshments and we talk. I have a handout similar to like what's in your program today for the message that I didn't preach, which I'll preach next week, so don't get on the app and find the answers again, all right, so, um, but we'll have that, and so we can talk about things and have a good time, so that's that's one of the groups that we're doing, and it's an expository teaching through the Word of God, so if you want to kind of just, it's only eight weeks, if you want to kind of step in and walk through the book with us, you, you'll have a good time, I enjoy it. Absolutely, and if you don't know what expository teaching is, just sign up, and you'll learn, that's how that works, <laughs> um, and so with, with that also, we got God's masterpiece, this is more interest-based, um, so you do not have to know how to paint. I'm going to put that up front. Uh, but really, it's just gathering with other people of like minds. are going to be painting. Uh, but at the same time, there's going to be devotional. There's going to be time devoted uh, to God in that. So and, sign and up for that. And the young girl with the, with the tall hair. That's yeah, yeah. If we can go back to that photo her, real her quick. And her yeah. mama, her and yeah. her mama are Let's see. Are Where, where's that? that photo at real quick? Well, the people. Yeah, if we can go back to that, that'd be amazing. Bam! There, there we go. Right there. there we go. Right there in the middle. Yeah, right there so it's gonna be shy. Yeah, right over here. You see <laughs> Gabby Gordon uh, here in the middle. Don't Shy's be looking like, for that hair. Her hair doesn't look like that, look like that anymore. anymore. <laughs> so thank goodness she changed that, isn't it? I'm just kidding. Oh Come on, gosh. guys. We got to laugh. You guys. Sure. She knows These I'll are your leaders now. Give it up for your leaders. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Uh, but on top of that, we also know there was a lot of mothers, new babies. They're still come coming gosh, as well. There's yeah. going to be a great Praise ride. There's a lot. Uh, people stop drinking the About water eight. from what I hear. Yeah, nobody's <laughs> drinking the water anymore around here. Uh, you have like eight and eight more eight, coming. Like eight babies like in that. the past That's two months. Isn't it? Crazy. Y'all been months. praying for multiplication. It's coming. I'm trying yeah. to tell you. Uh, but here's the thing. There's a group specifically for mothers and babies as well. But yes, a matter of fact, we're going to throw this pitch out right now. Now, if anybody, <laughs> yes, uh, yeah, honestly, we really do. If you have an interest for, for nursery and wanting to bless, if somebody's blessing you in a manner with your children, mm -hmm. bless them in return. We're yeah, not yeah, asking yeah. you to be there every yeah. Sunday. We're just asking you to be a part. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Just be a part of that. And so uh, let us know. Like Everybody turned the other way at that moment. No, yeah. but honestly, let us know. We're called to serve each other. But there's a group for the mothers as well as those babies. There's a women's one as well that's going to be happening. And that one is based on the teachings that come out of here. And it goes deeper mm -hmm. uh, throughout when they do meet on Mondays. There are those two, the women's and uh, the couples is going to have child care.
care. We want to make sure y'all had that. Uh, Bible wisdom. So seniors, if you are new, it's a, there is so much wisdom that happens up there. My goodness. There's a they group for church. seniors. They, they got, yeah, it's pre-church yeah. before the church. Like pre-church before right. church. Uh, they do a lot of things, but uh, yeah. as well, there's a seniors group. Um, and there's prayer for also. Just for a moment. Yep. And I just want to brag on the church for a moment because of the growth. It's absolutely incredible to me. And I don't know if you've noticed it, but every time we bring up a, like a membership group, if you were to look at it over the last three years, you would see that we have grown just as, just as much with senior adults as we have with young adults. That's incredible, church. That doesn't happen. And so what I want to encourage is those who are uh, on that senior level of, of, uh, of education and wisdom, we want to invite you um, to come be a part of an amazing group every Sunday morning um, right on the second level. They do have an amazing time, amazing leadership, amazing speakers. I mean, you've got like uh, Pastor Rob and Calvin. and I, I mean, you've got some amazing, of course, Pastor Jennifer and uh, Glenn. Uh, he was waving the offering bucket up there. He's good. He's good. He was waving that offering bucket. So wonderful leadership. You'll be glad you did. I just want to encourage because I know we have a lot of new seniors maybe that have not taken part. It's not just that group. They have luncheons. They have, they go, they have outings, wonderful, wonderful times together. So anyway, I'm so. Yeah, it's definitely a great group as well. I'm going to go ahead and ask if you are leading in some way, uh, one of these groups, if your photo was up there, just you can go ahead and exit out, go out to the promenade, uh, and everybody's going to meet you there momentarily. Uh, there's a prayer group also. If you if you have a, a heart for intercessory prayer or just even wanting to learn how to pray, I would encourage you to sign up for that group. And we also have a caregiver uh, support group, and that one's for anybody who is giving uh, care to somebody, whether it's elderly or a loved one. There's a group specifically for you to receive support. Uh, so that's going to be a group out there as well. And so that's how it's going to work. But as, as pastor was saying, God's hand is on this move right now. And what it is that he is calling us to do. We are called to become fully devoted followers of Jesus Christ. And it is our job as the word tells us, as far as pastors and leaders to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. Amen. It's our job to equip you. We want to make sure that we're doing that in the right way. And that's why we wanted to be so intentional with the groups going forward year round, as well as just making sure there is something for everyone. So don't take this lightly. I, I promise you, you will grow. If you are in this church, you go, I've been in the church for 30 years. I'm still at the same place that pastor was talking about. Today is their day where that will shift because we are implementing something that the enemy does not like, but it's going to work because God's hand is on that. Amen. Amen. And so the way it works, I'm going to ask my son really quick. Can you bring me this? Uh, fl- yep. That right there. Yep. Go to the pamphlet. There you go. Yes. The whole thing. He's like, do not call me up there. Dad, do not call me up there. I love you, son. What's up, Khalid? We're going to talk about that a little Everybody later. Everybody say, huh? hey, Khalid. Khalid. Yeah. You remember that time he left his Bible? Mm-hmm. He ain't done it again. Ain't Not since you called him out. That's right. No, so you have the pamphlet. There's a lot of information on every group, but right on the back is the QR code. So you scan that. That's going to get you to our website, to our app, to be able to uh, go ahead and get connected into that that group. So that's how that works right there. And here momentarily, you guys are going to go out there. We're, we're asking you guys, connect, ask the question. The leaders are ready to lead you. And so they're going to be out there. And the last thing I want to say about that, you're going to find some cookies out there. That was very <laughs> intentional. For your kids, stay with me so that you have time to speak to the leaders, okay? But I do have to say, some of these cookies, they came encased with cookies that have peanut butter. Uh, there are no peanut butter cookies out there, but I do want to let everybody know in case there are allergies as well as nuts. So just heads up on that. Sounds good? Amen. There's no uh, red 40, though, or any dyes. So No dyes. No dyes, no dyes no whatsoever. Dyes. And with yeah. that, so I'm going to go ahead and transition really quick uh, as far as what's coming up. You guys also saw the card, which my son didn't give it to me. Uh, Fall Fest is coming up in November. Uh, thir- there it is right there. Fall Fest is coming up. You're going to walk out there as well, and we've got thousands, I feel like. We've got a whole box 5, of those. 5,000. Yeah, 5,000 5, of those cards. cards. Take some. Take them to your work. Give them to everybody. Walmart, hand them out. Uh, be invitational when it comes to this. It's going to be a massive Fall Fest. Uh, so that's coming up. November 3rd, and then let me grab my phone because I know they're... Oh. I just want to encourage on this as well. What a, what a great tool to uh, to use for those who maybe are a little intimidated maybe to, to invite, that kind of thing. It's very simple, very easy just to put one in the hand of someone. And I want to, and I just want to encourage the church. The reason we do Fall Fest and we do big days like this is to give the unchurched people in your, fam, in your life uh, a reason to come. Because so they're not going to come just because of church typically, but they might come because there's a pumpkin catapult that's going to be launching pumpkins after church that Sunday. And so um, I want to remind everyone, if you're newer too, there's, there's fine print. You're going to see it. There is a catch, by the way. You know the pastor has a catch on this. So, so there's fine print. Um, you can barely read it. It says, very small at the bottom, outdoor. I can barely read it, see? Outdoor festivities to follow, come on, worship service. So we do the events so that the unchurched people in your life we experience this. That's our 
That's our goal. That's what we're looking for is to see your family, your coworkers, your neighbors, one to the Lord. Fall Fest is our next real opportunity to do that. Absolutely. Amen. So it's basically they're going to come in here and say, I love Jesus. Where do I launch a pumpkin? That's basically yeah, yeah, yeah. what's going to happen. Yeah. yeah, it's going to be absolutely where's amazing time. That's like, where's my barbecue? Where are my ribs at? Uh, I hope we have ribs now. No, but we also, those of you guys, uh, as far as Connect Card, if this is your first time, uh, please fill one of those out. You can, if we can put the image up with the QR code, you can scan that. First time guest, uh, let us know. We want to connect with you. As well as second time, you only have to do your name. Let us know it's your second time. And then third time. We had a third time guest, actually fill the card out today. Appreciate that. Witnessed it Um, with my own eyes. That's right. It was glorious. The presence of God fell on that moment. I'll tell you that. Absolutely. Uh, But because of that, our membership class is coming up October 6th. So if you're you're here and you're stating, you know what, I really like it here and I want to become a part of what God is doing in this house, I want you to go ahead and sign up as well for October 6th. That is going to be our membership class. And women, we've got a Woven Together event that is coming up, so make sure to go online as well, connect with that, and a worship night October 6th yep. as well. So uh, same thing, the invitation, here. lots There's of good, good things are going on, this lots of good things for sure. Speaking of good stuff, let's receive our offering. Ushers, come on, come on down. Those of you who are filling out a connection card, I, I want to tell you the connection card is so important for us because it does just that for us. It gives us the ability to connect with you. And so we would love to connect with you. We'd love for you to connect with us. So take time. Fill out a connection card. You can do it by electronically. There's a QR there. Um, also, you can fill out one that's in the seat back. But also on your way out, you'll see a teal table. Um, that has a lot of information on it. We have a free gift for you there. And then also we have a wonderful team that uh, helps us uh, and puts together a a postcard, which I signed, and and we mail that out. There's another gift inside of there. So if you like gifts, I don't know if you like gifts or not, but if you like gifts, receiving free things, fill out one of those connection cards. And, uh, yeah. Did you have something else? No, no, we're good. We're going to go. We're going to go ahead and take an offering really quick. And just read a scripture, by the way. Absolutely. Pastor's going to read a scripture. So... Hebrews chapter 13. There's 13 chapters in there, right? Chapter 13, verse 16 says this. Do not forget or neglect to do kindness and good, to be generous and distribute and contribute to the needy of the church as embodiment and proof of fellowship, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. I'm always, I, it, t- it took me a while to learn this, but I learned that giving, especially tithing, is absolutely a matter of heart. Anytime that I've ever met anyone that struggles with these concepts, there's a heart issue, including my own early on, until I learned God's way of doing things. And man, when I come and brought my heart into that place, it's absolutely incredible to me, the blessings and the favor of God upon my life. I want to encourage you, if you've never become a tither, never been a giver, I want to encourage you, take that time today. He says, don't neglect it. So that means when the bucket comes by, don't throw your hands up. Don't look the other way. Don't neglect it. At least touch it, you know. You know, don't neglect it. But it is a real, real blessing, and it is a real form of worship. And so I want to thank you. We have such a wonderful partnership. We have wonderful partners, but we also want to say thank you for all of our givers. Um, You guys are such a blessing. Uh, the tithers, the, the, the sowers of seed, and the contributors for our youth, for our building funds. Um, thank you for just being such a huge part of what God's doing here. Amen. I'm going to leave it to you. Absolutely. And so the ways that you guys can do that, we're going to have our ushers go ahead and pass these uh, around right now, pass the buckets. Uh, but you can also text to give. Uh, we've got a mobile app as well as online. You can do those online as well. So there's plenty of opportunities to do that. But I can uh, let me encourage you, if you've never uh, stepped into returning the tithe, can I tell you that God's word is true and there's a promise in that? There's a promise that uh, he says this is the only area that we're allowed to test him in, uh, that he will basically not open up the floodgates of heaven on our behalf. I w- there was a time in my life where I had to trust him in his word, and I've been blessed ever since then. So I've never stopped. I actually returned back the 10% to the penny. Like, I don't take anything from myself. And on top of that, let me just say, it's a return. You're giving God what is rightfully his, and that's what we're doing. So I'm going to ask that you guys go ahead and stand to your, uh, to your feet as well. What an amazing time it was today. I believe that. And so here in a moment, we're going to go ahead and walk out. Uh, make sure to ask your questions to your leaders. Let's make sure to get connected. So, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Pause that prayer. Pause that prayer. Also, my daughter got engaged yesterday. So, Riley, I forgot to say something to Riley. So, y'all be praying for them every day. It's easy to remember. Riley and Riley. Riley, Riley. Okay, sorry. 
<laughs> I was saying earlier, she's walking like this because her hand, you know, the ring is heavy. She's like coming in a church. Uh, I had to say it up there. Uh, but no, seriously, congratulations to you guys. And may the Lord just bless you guys abundantly. May he bless you guys. But Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I just ask that you would just bless us once again. We thank you for your, your presence that's in the house, Father, how tangible it is, Father. Continue to bless us, even bless the leaders, bless these groups, Father, that we would get connected and that we would grow to where it is that you are calling us uh, to go. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Make sure to get 